Jim Rickards thinks gold is going to ten to fifty thousand dollars an ounce. I think it might even go higher than that, up to a hundred thousand an ounce. I'm going to tell you why right now in three simple, fast steps. Starting with step number one, we're going to go over the dollar collapse. You've got two schools of thought. You got some really smart guys on each side of the equation. Guys like Brent Johnson, Jeff Snyder, and Jim Rogers think that the dollar is going to go up first, and guys like Schiff, Rickards, and Gunlock think that the dollar is going to go straight down. But one thing that they all agree on is that the end game for the United States dollar is a collapse. We all know the argument for the dollar going straight down. That's well stated. But the argument for the dollar going up first and then crashing is a little less known. So I want to review that quickly. Brent Johnson's theory is that we've got the United States here and all these other countries outside of the United States have a lot of dollar denominated debt. So that means that they borrowed in dollars, not only countries, but entities and corporations. So there's all this demand outside of the United States for dollars that artificially props up the price. Also, in most of these markets, the interest rates are lower than the United States. I know that sounds hard to believe, but <laughs> it's actually true, especially as of about six months ago before Powell started lowering rates. So Johnson's theory is that brings all this capital into the United States because it can get a better return, therefore a lot more demand for dollars. That's why he sees the dollar going up first and then crashing. Jeff Snyder's view is a little bit different. He is an expert on a system called the Euro dollar. Basically what this is, is most economists and most professionals believe that the United States controls all of the creation of dollars and they manage it within their regulation with our banks and the Federal Reserve. This is not true. If any of you think that the United States is actually in control of the production or the creation of the United States dollar, you've got another thing coming. You're sadly mistaken and I'll show you why. Outside of the United States, you have all these foreign banks that are outside of the regulatory umbrella of the Federal Reserve. A lot of these banks don't have reserve requirements. So to make a long story short, they get dollars into the system, whether that was 40, 50, 60 years ago. And because they don't have reserve requirements and because banks create money, outside of a fractional reserve system, there is no limit to the amount of dollar denominated loans that they can create. So you've got bank X and banks Y. Bank X lends to corporation, bank Y lends to this corporation, and bank X and Y will lend dollars back and forth to one another. Bank Y will take the loans from these corporations and they will combine them, like we do here at those good old mortgage-backed securities, into derivatives. A fund, an investment fund, will buy these derivatives from the banks in dollars. Well, where do they get the dollars to buy these derivatives? They borrow the dollars from Bank X, who creates them out of thin air. So there's this whole system, whether you want to call it shadow banking or euro dollars, that exists outside of the United States. And Snyder believes that this system is so large that the actual world reserve currency is not the dollar. It's actually the euro dollar. And because the Federal Reserve has dropped interest rates so low and the whole entire world is starved for yield, they're making more and more and more of these derivatives in order to get a return. The more derivatives that they create out of dollar funding, the more demand there is for dollars. That makes the dollar go up, but at some point in time, all of these chickens have got to come home to roost Snyder believes that will definitely happen and that will completely collapse the dollar. 
Jim Rogers' view is a little bit more straightforward. He is a dollar bear. He thinks it is the most flawed currency in the world today. But he also realizes that everyone else outside the United States and inside the United States sees the US dollar as a safe haven. So he believes that the world economy is going to go through some big, big problems in the future because of all of its debt. So when those crashes start to happen in other economies and in the United States, he thinks people are going to pile into the dollar because, again, they see it as a safe haven. That's why Jim Rogers thinks that the dollar is going to go up before it collapses. Let's bring it right back to Jim Rickards. When this occurs, Rickards thinks that the IMF is going to come in and try to save the monetary system with SDRs, Special Drawing Rights, which is basically the fiat currency of the IMF, International Monetary Fund. But he also thinks that the world might not accept this because we just had a fiat crisis in the form of the dollar. So why on earth would people accept another fiat currency? In that case, we would have no choice. And when he says we would have no choice, he means even the central banks and the governments. They'd have to go back to a gold standard, even though they wouldn't want to. They'd have to to restore confidence in the world monetary system. A lot of people say, well, that's impossible. There's not enough gold. And Rickards makes a great point here. There is enough gold, it's just a matter of the price. To understand this further, let's take a little history lesson. Let's go back to World War I. During this time, England went off of the gold standard so they could increase the money supply to pay for the war. Prior to this, gold was $20 an ounce. Moving on to 1925, after the war, Churchill came in and he says, you know what, that gold standard was a good idea. Let's go back to that. And the gold standard before was $20 an ounce, so now we'll just make it $20 an ounce again. And Keynes came in and said, whoa, 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 time out. He goes, what are you doing? That's insane. And he was actually really pissed. And he said, you can't take it to $20 an ounce because you've doubled the money supply. If you leave it at this price, you're going to shrink the money supply overnight and it's going to create massive deflation. Keynes said what you should do is you should increase the price of gold denominated in the currency to 40 per ounce. And since that matches up with the money supply, you won't get this deflation. Well, Churchill didn't take his advice at all. And what did we get? Deflation that contributed to the Great Depression. As you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of Keynesian economics, but in this case, Keynes was right. You got to give credit where credit is due. And I really want you guys to pay attention to this because at the end of the video, you're going to need to understand this to know how we get to this number of $100,000 per ounce. Step number two, let's go through Jim Rickard's math and understand how he comes to these numbers, $10,000 an ounce and $50,000 an ounce. To make this really clear, I'm going to show you how a gold standard is set up and then we're going to use very small numbers until we get to the really big ones. So what Rickards does is he takes M1 money supply or M2 for the USD, United States dollar, the euro, the yen, and I think he might use the yuan, but I'm not sure, so I put a question mark here. What he then does is looks at the number of ounces of gold that these countries have at their disposal, or the number of ounces that they own. He then asks the question, well, do we want a 40% gold standard, 70%, do we want a 100% gold standard? And then it's just simple eighth grade math, or what he calls eighth grade math, it's probably a little easier than that. Let's assume in this example that there are $100 worth of M1 or M2, and there's only 20 ounces of gold, and we want a 40% gold standard. First thing we do is take 40% of 100. That gives us 40. 
we take the number of ounces, that's 20, and we divide 40 by 20, which gives us 2. So in order to have a 40% gold standard in this very simple example, gold would have to be priced at $2 an ounce. Now let's go ahead and use some real numbers with just the USD. M1 currently is right around $4 trillion. We've got 8,000 tons of gold, which equals 256 million ounces. For this example, we use a 100% gold standard. Dividing 4 trillion by 256 million gives us a gold price, a per ounce gold price of $15,265. If we move that to M2, which is a much bigger money supply, that's about 15 trillion right now. The per ounce price of gold would need to be 58,593. Let's remember that Rickards in his math is using gold to M2 with multiple currencies and a 40% gold standard, which is why these numbers differ slightly from the 10 to 50,000 that he gives us. Step number three, how do I get to a per ounce gold price of 100 thousand dollars and you may be saying to yourself George that is absolutely impossible that's crazy talk all right let me explain this to you and we'll see if you still have that same opinion when I'm done let's remember Jeffrey Snyder's work on the euro dollar that's the Fed and the banking system in the United States think that they control the money supply of dollars, but we know that's not true. So the M1 numbers and the M2 numbers that we get on the Federal Reserve's website, that doesn't include all of the other dollars that are created outside of the system, all these Euro dollars and shadow banking. And Jeff Snyder says there's so many of these Euro dollars created that it's actually the true world reserve currency. Well, if it's the true world reserve currency, that would imply that there's at least as many Euro dollars as there are US dollars in the system that the Fed knows about. If we double M2, we've got to double the price of gold to maintain that gold standard. That's what takes us from 50,000 an ounce to 100,000 an ounce. Oh, but wait, there is more. It's not just dollars that are created outside of the system. It's yen that are created outside of Japan and euros that are created outside of the eurozone. So not only do we have euro dollars, we have euro yen and we have euro euros. The money supply has grown exponentially since we have been off the gold standard in 1971. And I know this is just blowing your mind right now, but to get a grasp on how huge this system actually is and how large the world money supply is outside of what we know, let's look at the derivatives market, which is over one quadrillion. Editor, pull that up right now. Let's go to the visual capitalist and you guys can get an idea of how massive this money supply actually is. But coming back here, we look at this $100,000 per ounce price and you could very easily see how this could be way, way too low, especially when we remember the mistake that Churchill made in 1925 where he mispriced gold too low and it was one of the catalysts of the Great Depression. Obviously, the powers that be will want to avoid that like the plague. So if they're going to err on pricing gold, they're going to err on pricing it too high as opposed to too low. I want to personally thank Issa White, Kevin Belcher, Menno Barron, Elisa Lamas, Wyona McGee, and Brian Packer, all of which have donated to the channel via PayPal. And Brian, I got your question. I responded to you, but I never heard back. 
So I want to make sure that you got my answer. If you didn't, make sure you let me know in the comments below this video. For more information like this, check out this content right here, and I will see you on the next video.